Hey, look, it's Lilith! Ha ha! Oh, wait. Oh, it's not. Hmm. What is up everybody? This is the Che coming at you with my first build for season five. Today I want to talk to you guys about the Andariel's Barrage Rogue. If you guys were around last season, you know I absolutely loved the Andy's Puncture build and played it basically exclusively for the entire season. So today we're gonna hop right into it. But before we do, go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, help out the channel, support. Let me know what you want to see next down in the comments. All right, so let's hop right into it. Start with the skills, as it were, as we usually do. So we're going to come up here to the first thing. Grab anything you want to get you to the second tree. You're never, ever, ever going to use it. Put Blade Shift there. I actually leveled with Blade Shift and Twisting Blades, so I kind of have a soft spot for that now that we can actually use melee abilities. Makes it awesome. Pop one down. I only have one point in Barrage, the rest of my points come from gear. Pop in Enhance Barrage to get the increased Ricochet chance and then Improved Barrage to make the enemies vulnerable because vulnerable is more damage. I put three points into Sturdy, get a little bit of close damage reduction because we are face tanking all the mobs. Go ahead and grab Shadow Step into Enhanced Shadow Step into Discipline Shadow Step because we like to have the extra cooldown, helps us get out of trouble, and it also helps us with the gameplay. I will show you that when we get there. We got three points into Unstable Elixirs. This is letting us use our Health Potion as a cooldown. So what this does is it stuns enemies around us and increases our damage by 18. Notice that does not say increases your damage to stunned enemies. It says stuns enemies for two seconds and increases your damage by 18% for 10 seconds. So even if you're at full life, you want to drink a potion every 10 seconds because it's going to be giving us 18% more damage. Then you're going to grab dash, which is also part of our gameplay. So don't forget that button when you're using this. It's going to just dash through enemies. It's going to, it can proc your poisons. It's doing good. Critical strike chance. We don't really give too much care about while we are doing that is going down to methodical dash because it's going to be giving us reduced cooldown and an extra charge, just letting us get around a little faster. We all love Agile. Using a cooldown gets your in dodge chance up by 12% for three seconds. We are always using things that are considered cooldowns, so that is going to be up basically all of the time. Our biggest damage reduction is going to be Dark Shroud. This is going to be up all the time. You will notice the button is not on our bar because we don't have to push it. We proc it with Umbra's Aspect. What this does, we grab that, protective shadows, damage reduction per active shadow, we get five, so it's almost 40%. Enhanced Dark Shroud, you get move speed and a 15% chance for it not to be consumed, and then countering Dark Shroud, you get a little bit increased critical strike chance. We don't have any critical strike chance on our gear, and the reason being, because we can't really crit for our big damage. So we use this to give us a little bit of crit chance so we have a little bit better chance keeping up Dark Shroud. It's gonna be up 100% of our time. If you do happen to have a little bit of crit, of crit chance, healing a little bit when one is removed is also not a bad idea, but they did roll the old talent into the Enhanced Dark Shroud to give you the movement speed so you get the best of both worlds here. You really don't have any problems healing because of Andariel's Helmet. We have Poison Trap. This is going to be a huge part of our gameplay because it procs our sword. Poison Trap into Enhanced Poison Trap to knock down the enemies because CC is important. And then we deal 15% increased Poison Traps to enemies standing in our Poison Trap. They changed that. It used to be to enemies affected by your Poison Trap. Now they actually have to be in it. Exploit and malice are our two best things i still do not have a neck with these i am sorry increased damage to healthy and injured enemies increased damage to vulnerable enemies and increased damage to knockdown enemies they can apply simultaneously down here we're using poison imbuement this is just basically free 20 percent damage plus it does give us a little bit of damage stacking up 
We have enhanced poison imbuement. We can spam this to keep our energy up. I'll show you how we're keeping our energy up when we get to the gameplay. Mixed poison imbuement, 30% chance to release to cooldown of poison imbuement. We can basically spam that button. Two points into deadly venom. You'd also ideally have this on your neck as well. This is a lot of damage. It's incredible. Debilitating dachshunds. This is making enemies that are damaged by poison deal less damage. And then alchemical advantage. Every poison damage increases our attack speed and lucky hit chance. Now, and lucky hit chance, remember that, for 8 seconds up to 15%. So we always have extra attack speed and lucky hit chance from that. 3 points into frigid finesse because we are always chilling and freezing enemies. Down here is my favorite cluster and I love it so much. Innervation. 70% chance to gain energy. Amazing because we're using lucky hit chance to get our energy. Alchemist fortune. Lucky hit chance you deal with non-physical attacks, so our poison imbued attacks have a 15% increase like a hit chance. And second wind, every 100 energy you spend grants you some life. As barrier, this is helping us stay alive with some of the things that we're doing because some of the things we're doing are pretty tough. It actually keeps us from getting one shot by devastators in the level eight um, onslaughts. So I'm gonna show you that after I'm done going over everything. Death trap. Love Death Trap. I don't know if any of you guys have watched some of my older content. I really, really, really love Death Trap. I really want to make just a traps build work, but I'm struggling to get that to be very good. So, pulls them in, deals really good damage, and then when it deals an enemy, the cooldown of it is reduced by 12 seconds. So that helps us out a lot. And then down here we have our key passive. Damaging close enemies with marksman and cutthroat skills both gain 15% attack speed for 8 seconds. This is what I was talking about our gameplay. We need to use our dash and our shadow step as our cutthroat skills to keep half of that up because our barrage isn't going to be our marksman skill that's keeping the other side up, right? So we're not using this for the extra damage. As you can see, my close quarters combat damage is only 27%, but when both attack speeds are available, you deal extra damage. Yeah, it's a little bit extra, but the big thing here is to get the 30% attack speed. All right, let's get the Paragon points. As usual, do not cookie cutter anybody's Paragon points, right? This is to show you what boards we're using and what glyphs we're using. Use your Paragon board to fill in the weaknesses in your build. If you need more armor, if you need more resistances, if you need more this, if you need more that. That's what you need to use your Paragon board for. However, that being said, let's hop right into what we're using here. We're using the Control Glyph, which is going to deal increased damage to chilled and frozen enemies. We love that. We have over here the Eldritch Bounty Node, which is amazing. This just gives us a flat 20% increase in damage to our imbuement skills. We are ideally having every attack we make imbued with poison so it is making just us have 20 percent increased poison damage all the time we can use it more, more than once every nine seconds our helmet is doing increased poison damage at all times we are using the candy glyph non-physical damage increases the non-physical damage you deal up to 50, up to 10 percent for 15 seconds which is amazing what we're using that for because we are doing non-physical damage primarily here we are using the cheap shot node you deal increased damage for each nearby enemy that is crowd controlled a nearby stagger boss provides maximum bonus okay so we play this build melee style so we are always going to have that up we're using the tracker glyph here poison effects last 40 percent longer the way poison works this is literally just 40 percent more dps because it stacks up more it stacks up longer it stacks up faster and each time we poison, 40% more duration on something that does a flat amount every second. There you go, right? It's incredible. Incredible damage. And the little coup de grace on the top of that one, increased damage to poison enemies. Over here, we have the fluidity, which we love now. Whenever you cast an agility skill, you do increased damage and gain increased energy regeneration for six seconds. We do that all the time. And... The cherry on top here, 9.3% more maximum life. Who doesn't want extra max life? All right. No witnesses. Your ultimate skill gains an additional 10% damage from your damage with ultimate bonus and bonus to all skills for 10 seconds when cast. So it deals an extra 35% damage. I don't have this up as high as I can. I can get 10% more damage. 
Um, you'll see in my gear kind of where it's at. Over here, we have the exploit weakness. Hitting a vulnerable enemy has a 6% chance to increase your damage by 1% for up to 25% at 25 stacks. It remains for 6 seconds before expiring. So, this stacks up really fast because we do get a lot of lucky hits, right? So, this is up almost all of the time. As you can see here, we do not have a glyph socket in that one. And then the last board we have up here, we have Bane. So Bane deals increased poison damage and have a 15% chance to double the amount of damage dealt over their duration. Um, sometimes I see ticks over 1 billion and my gear is not optimized. I'm still working on my gear. And then we have Deadly Ambush. You deal 23% increased critical strike damage to enemies affected by your trap skills. We always have enemies affected by our trap skills. All right, so now that we've gone over the skills in the Paragon, let's go over the gear. My gear is not optimized. I'm going to tell you that now, but I'm going to show you what I've done and kind of tell you a little bit about what you should do or maybe what you shouldn't do. And we will go for We have talked about the skills in the Paragon. Let's talk about the gear. Firstly, you have to have Endarial's Visage. The build will not work without it. Don't even try. You have to have Endarial's Visage. So... And Air's Visage gives you all the poison resist you're ever going to need. Period. 131 all stats, 633 life on hit, 51% attack speed, 17% maximum poison resistance. What I would recommend is trying to get your rolls on the attack speed. I didn't. I got my first roll on the attack speed and I just rolled mine on up because I didn't have the resources to re-roll it. Once I get another one, I'm going to start working on that. As you can see, we have the maximum life gem in there and the lucky hit up to a 20% chance to trigger Poison Nova that applies 110,280 poison damage over five seconds to enemies in the area. That is all of our DPS. You will see that is ticking for hundreds of millions and my biggest crits are like a million. It's amazing. We love this hat and it looks sick. Tyrael's Might. You do not have to have Tyrael's Might for this build to work. If you do not have Tyrael's Might, Put on a chest that has something along the lines of some resist all, some dex, some dex and some life, some resist to fill a slot and some life, or something else. But you have to have dark shroud levels on that chest piece until you get your materials might because it gives you way, way, way more damage reduction. When you get a materials might, I got lucky in my movement speed GA. I'm happy about that. I actually wish my master work had hit the movement speed. I'm going to re-roll this as soon as I get the materials. So this has movement speed, more maximum resistance to all elements, increased resistances to all elements. This makes it super, super, super easy to max all resistances. I'm going to show you that in a second. I kind of left bad gems in my jewelry to show you this. And then it gives you a flat... 34% damage reduction. So we don't really care too much about while at 4 life, your skills, blah, blah, blah. 4,000 damage is nothing. We don't care. And then we're putting max life in here. If you are staying alive well enough, you can put dex gems in your gear. You can move it around as you see fit. But as for right now, I'm using the life gems for demonstration to show you how survivable the build is. On my pants... I still have some reitemization to do. As you can see, I'm a little over armor cap, so I might be able to move some stuff around. Here, you are going to be trying to just get tanky pants. And you also want CC on this piece of gear because we only get two pieces of gear this time around that have CC because we're going to use three uniques on our armor. Here, you want to have tanky stats. You want to prioritize getting second wind as a temper and the reason being i showed you over here in the talent section second wind is uh, amazing right it gives you barrier right we need this this helps us stay alive in some very dangerous situations second wind is amazing for us all right we have umbris aspect on here because umbris is what helps us keep up our dark shroud as you can see i still don't have a max roll but when we go through the gameplay, you'll see that I have it up basically 100% of the time. We have the Noxious Ice aspect on our boots. Here you want movement speed, tanky stats, and then chance to freeze, preferably 
Um, that way you have two different things you're stacking just from your lucky hit there. And you want to roll your movement speed. You want to make sure that you have the inherent movement speed. And as always, we like to have the attacks reduce evades cooldown rather than more stacks of evade because we are attacking so fast we can basically just spam the space bar and it's amazing so what this imprint does chilled enemies poisoned by poison imbuement will be further chilled you deal increased poison damage to frozen enemies so it helps us freeze them it helps us do more damage and it's just overly amazing so with our main weapon here we have creeping death so little uh tidbit when i got this bow and i switched my bow I forgot to switch the um, imbuement, or not the imbuement, but the imprint, and um, I was like, oh man, why is my damage bad? And then I like opened my character sheet and I went, oh, and it like, yes, it makes a difference. So here, this is our primary way of keeping our resource high. So you see, I got a GA on it. I love that I got a GA on this. You'll see that I am never, ever, ever, ever out of energy. This is amazing. So you want to have decks life and a lucky hit chance to restore primary resource the higher that is the better because once it procs you're you will see many times that like i may be at like 30 percent energy and then it just goes back to full it's amazing here you want damage per dark shroud shadow because we are almost always going to be at five and you want chance for barrage to cast twice ideally i'm going to reroll this a couple of times until i can get barrage projectiles to cast twice to be my masterwork because I'd like to get that as close to 100% as I can. Right now, I'm happy with this though, in the meantime. And then the imprint on this does increased damage over time for each different crowd control effect they're affected by. Unstoppable enemies and staggered bosses take 80% increased damage from you instead. So when you stagger a boss or something that can't be CC'd, it's gonna take increased damage. It's amazing. You will see when we stagger something and you saw in the Lilith footage that when you CC something, it just And as you can see here, I have the ultimate damage in my weapons. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm thinking about it real quick and put the ultimate damage in my other two weapons a little bit higher because I have not yet made those gems. So, there we go. We'll go ahead and pop those in here. We'll unsocket. Nope, not add socket. Unsocket! We'll unsocket that guy and that guy. So we're going from 15% to 35%. So this should max my thing on my Paragon board that I showed you guys. Let's see if it did. I had forgotten about that. I'm glad I decided to make this guy. That is the wrong one. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Anyway, so let's keep going through the gear here. We have on our main hand, we have Bone Blade of Bursting Venoms. So you want to have a dagger ideally as your non-unique weapon. And the reason being you deal increased damage to close enemies and you are face tanking everything. So here you want something along the lines of dex, max life, damage over time. You want to get chance for barrage to cast twice here as well, because that is very important. And then increasing your damage per dark shroud shadow is also going to help us out a whole lot here. So that's what we want. What Bursting Venoms does, this is the imprint that gives us a chance to create a toxic pool that deals damage over three seconds. While standing in the pool, your poison and boomment has no cooldown and no charge limit. It's not for the damage that we use this. It's so that while we're standing there and we're tanking the bosses and we're making these pools, we can keep it going without having to rely on the cooldown. Again, we are using the ultimate damage gem here to get our ultimate damage up. So we are um, benefiting as much as we can from the extra bonus after we drop the death trap. Then we have the Umber Cucks over here. Plus six to Innervation just happened to be what I rolled. Um, if you need a little refresher of what Innervation does, you can go back to the skills section. But what we have here, Dexterity, Vulnerable Damage, Sutterfuge Cooldown, Innervation. Sutterfuge skills create an attackable Shade Totem for eight seconds up to any damage is replicated to surrounding enemies at 20% effectiveness. You can have one at a time. It counts as a trap skill. So what this does is if it's poisoned, 
and there's a poison pool below it, it still pulses, right? This helps our AOE clear tremendously. It helps our single bogus, our single target clear tremendously. This is just an amazing item. Mine is garbage. As you can see, I have a 3.3 second shade totem. I need a much better one than this. I need to get on farming that, but as of right now, that's what I have. So we are going to pop into the jewelry now. High velocity ring. This is going to be making our barrage pierce through one enemy, and it's going to increase our barrage attack speed. This is amazing. Um, on this, you want lucky hit, damage over time, maximum life. If your maximum life's good, you can put some attack speed here. The big thing here is you want poison imbuement last for extra cast. I need to remaster work this until I hit poison imbuement last for extra cast. Ideally, you want to have five or six. I only have three currently. Uh, five currently, I think. No, just three. Um, so it's a pain in the butt, but it really does help. You know, three going from five to eight is a lot. Um, so that'll help you out in the long run and just make the build a little bit more consistent. It's not going to break the build if you do not get that masterwork. So don't think that that's going to be a problem. It's fine. So I have the ring of starless skies. You do not need the ring of starless skies. This is like the finished build. Okay. So the ring of starless skies. Everybody knows what this does, gives you more damage when you spend your primary resource up to 50%. This is amazing. It gives us more damage, it gives us more levels to our core skills, it gives us lucky hits chance, attack speed, crit chance. This is the goat of this build. It makes it basically run itself at that point. Once you get Ring of Starless Skies, you're good, right? Um, that being said, you don't need that. If you do not get one, if you do not get one. You want to get a ring that has similar stats to this. You want attack speed. You want lucky hit chance. You want life, maybe, if you need some more life. Um, basically, the same kinds of stats. Get another roll of the lucky hit primary resources. You can put that as a secondary here at the blacksmith. And you also want it to have damage per dark shroud because that is a really good multiplier for us. And then finally, we're at the neck and then we're going to talk about the gloves because I left my favorite item in the build for last. Here, life, attack speed, lucky hit chance. That's not what you want. Everybody knows what we want. Open your skill tree. Go up here. Read these two and drool. You want to have exploit, malice, and frigid finesse on your neck. If you can get those, or if you can get deadly venom, those are all way better to get on your neck. No, I don't have them yet. Yes, I'm sad about it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so branching volleys <clears throat> increases the damage from your barrage ricochets. That's not what we're worried about. We're more concerned about them splitting whenever they ricochet because we want to get as many of these out as we can. And then when we're doing that, trap cooldown reduction is amazing. We want to have that roll because it's going to let us pop our poison trap more often, which is going to get our umber crux up more often. And it's going to help us pop our death trap more often because our death trap is in fact a trap skill and it's an ultimate skill. So it's going to help us get that up. And then you can also see we have damage for dark trout here. So looking at my stats, I am way over capped on all of my resistances here, right? My armor is overcapped, so I have these gems in here just to demonstrate. Use whatever gems you need to get your resistances capped until you get your gear right, and then you can start dropping rolls off of stuff to get where you need to get. You'll be able to trim, 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 and get everything down where you need it, and you'll be fine. Last but not least, we have what is quite possibly my favorite new addition to this, Fist of Fate. Mine rolled like poop. My attack speed is bad. My crit, ba my crit strike is bad. We do like that we have a decent roll to apply random crowd control effects. And we do not care about our attacks randomly dealing 1 to 240% of their minimum damage because we just want them to proc and arrows visage. What is amazing about this pair of gloves now that it has been remade is we can get up to 100% lucky hit chance by just upgrading the fist. If you get a pair of Fist of Fate, the GA lucky hit chance, 
Oh my goodness, please leave a comment. Leave if you send me a link to it on my Discord, I will post it. I want somebody to get those. I want somebody to be happy with it. That is going to make me happy. I'm going to try to buy a pair once I get, you know, enough gold. I don't have enough gold to afford a pair. So, that's just giving us all the lucky hit chance in the world. As you can see, I get lucky hit chance by 35% on my barrage. That's going to be going up um, because I have procs and things. So, there's that. All right. So, I'm going to demonstrate this build for you guys. All right. So, I'm about to demonstrate this for you guys. If you made this far, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Go ahead and leave me a comment what you're playing, what you're looking forward to. I'm going to kind of go through my thought process and why I'm pushing the buttons and things. This is a Onslaught 8, and I'm going to face tank everything in here. So, first thing I would do, go ahead and get your Poison Bumit going. Shadow Step to the mob. And then you basically just rotate through your cooldowns. Make sure you're Shadow Stepping. Make sure you're using your traps. Make sure you are keeping up both sides of your close quarters combat as you can see as things roll around i'm making sure i'm just hitting every button what i would recommend doing is as everything pops up like you get a soul spire go do it okay we got another event we got an etheric mass go do it um it doesn't matter if you use dash to proc your cqc or if you use your um Shadow step. I, depending on what affixes I see, sometimes I use my shadow step to box it. Sometimes I use my dash to proc it. Um, if I don't see anything that I feel like is going to CC me or anything that I feel like is going to be a problem, I will typically go ahead and just use my shadow step to reposition because, like I said, you're you want to be melee. Um, but here, I'll go ahead and shadow step because I know that I'm not going to be standing in the ice after I shadow step. All right, so let's see if we get anything good here. Oh, born. That's a good start. All right, so go ahead and do that as you're waiting. So, and so when you get your Hellborn, kind of grab them and bring them back to the middle is what I try to do. That way I can be DPSing them while I'm waiting on other things to spawn. Sometimes they'll just come straight to the middle anyway doesn't really matter all right so we got something else to spawn it pops up desecrator so this is the true final boss in the game right now as you can see you can face tank them um i will if i get the butcher i'll grab him just so you can see you can face tank the butcher you literally do not have to do anything except for stand there make sure you're hitting your cooldowns and keeping everything up and you will delete anything that comes your way um the only thing i've really had any actually the only thing that can kill me is probably when i am fighting uber lilith carrying somebody and i fail to dodge the blue orbs i'm pretty sure that's the only thing that's killed me since i've gotten the build put together um it really is just that strong because you have your big health pool you have your shield rolling. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, let's do the Hellfire because we don't have anything better to do. And Hellfire at least gives us some more Aether. Um, later on, we may be able to get the uh, synergy that Hellfire will spawn more Hellborn, which would be amazing. That will help us get more Aether, which is the whole goal, right? Because we want to be able to re-roll our gear and get the stats that we want, right? Alright, so you spawn the guys, walk over here. So, getting the Aether Lords is not the best idea and getting the Butcher is not the best idea, and the reason being when you spawn the Butcher and the Aether Lords, they take a little longer to take out, but as you are doing that, they do not allow other things to spawn. So if you grab them, you're automatically inhibiting the amount of Aether you're going to get on that run anyway. So try to avoid them if you can. 
Otherwise, I mean, if you're trying to build your synergies for that, by all means do that, but the majority of the time, that's not the way I would go. So we have Soul Spires take more, Soul Spires give more. Let's do the Soul Spires drain health, but give more because they're not going to take us out. So we are already up to 81. We just need some more synergies to get us a little higher. And we will be doing the thing. Which is going to be awesome. Excuse me. So as of right now, you can see that we are just taking out anything that we can. We're going to grab the Soul Spire. Yes, the Soul Spire is draining my health. No, it is not draining my health to the point that I am worried about it. So that's what we did. That is what we did. All right, so here we go. Tracking Infernal Sister. There's pretty much nothing I'm going to worry about in the wave portions of this ever. Um, you always want to walk over to whatever it is to make it spawn. Here's a Desecrator. We're going to face tank it. He just smacked me, and I'm still not dead. So, All right, so we know we got Hellborn over here. So let's go see what's spawning over here. Another Desecrator, which we are going to face tank. He smacked me. See, still not dead, which is amazing. All right. So let's finish clearing up the screen here. We got a couple Hellborn. We've got a couple regular mobs. Do, 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 do. You can see that Shade Totem doing work whenever it's got poison under it. It is a boss. All right, so Surging Hellborn or Exalted Hellborn. So this is going to give us more that spawn, and it's going to give us more when they die. So that's what we're going to take. See, if we didn't have this option, we would snap take this because it's just going to give them to us. But this is going to give us an extra Hellborn and each Hellborn is going to drop an extra Aether. So we're going to get three instead of two and each one of them is going to drop two instead of one. So we are going to be getting way more Hellborn. See, there's three right there. I love that it's the Rogue, the Sorcerer, and the Barbarian. It's giving us, you know, like they're desecrated players. Yada, yada, yada. All right, so there we go. There's three. Here's some Aether Fiends. Here's some more Hellborn. Banished Necromancer. Banished Rogue. We're going to go over here and see what spawns. So the Hellborn will not disappear after they spawn. So just go engage them. Have them try to follow you around. That way you're kind of miscellaneously damaging them while you're running around doing your thing and you can get as many of them on the screen as you can because why not you want as many as you can get all right so we got a mass let's take out the mass right, we didn't get the mass so we got a couple more hellborn here to clean up watch the totems blah 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 all right so we're taking it out taking them out taking them out let's see what we're at after five waves all right, we are at 179. So more Hellborn when spawned, and they grant more Aether. So now we're going to get four every time, and they're going to drop three. So that means every time a Hellborn spawns, we're going to get 12 Aether. Right? So this is going to be incredible. This might be a really good run, you guys. I'm glad I'm getting to record this one. All right, so we got a Soul Spire. May as well do it. We get to fill our bar while we're filling it out, so who cares? All right, there's some more Hellborn. Don't forget to hit your Cutthroat skill every now and then to keep your attack speed up, because you want to make sure you are going fast. Attack speed is our second best stat, our first being Lucky Hit. As you can see, everything is getting dotted up and falling over. You don't have to be anywhere near it. We are taking things out across the screen because of ricochets. You just want to make sure you are always, always, always going. And as you can see, with the way I have my gear set up, I am almost always, almost always at full energy. Right? Almost always. All right. So we got a ton that time. All right. So let's see. Uh, Stalking Dead, Invigorating Hellborn. All right, so we are going to take Invigorating Hellborn. We could, well, no, I said I would take the, the Butcher if he spawned, so I'm going to stick to that just to show you guys that you can literally face tank anything in these. Now, he does take a couple of seconds to kill because he's the Infernal Butcher, but all right, 
It's gonna be fun. Where's he at? All right, there he is. He charged me. He stunned me. I am standing here getting smacked. Don't care. All right. So we are gonna stand here, and we are gonna take the butcher out. You can see my my bar is moving. I am taking damage, but not worried. All right. So we're gonna stand here. We're gonna stagger him in just a second. Watch our dots stack after we stagger him. Look at that. 403 dee dee dee. All right. So yeah, uh, I think I saw two. I don't even know how many hundreds of millions that was, but. Like I said, you can face tank the Butcher with Hellborn on you and the Desecrator on you and, and everything. Like, it, this build is obscene after you get it a little bit started. Like I said, my gear is nowhere near optimal. I'm just doing what I have until I get the better things. And it is turning out to be very strong. Alright. So... Um, Aether Lords. I really don't want any of these. Soul Spires require double the kills. They give double the Aether. Um, defeating a Fel Council and them doing 15% more damage isn't really worth it. And then we don't want to spawn the Aether Lords because they make it where other things can't spawn. So we're going to do the ma uh, Soul Spires take double the kills and give double the things because we're still going to be able to get our um, Hellborn spawning. We're still going to be able to do all that. So um, may as well just take the lesser of the three evils because it was not something I didn't want any of this, to be completely honest with you. Alright, so we got that soul spire. Here's a mass and some more hellborn. We got some hellborn up there to the north. We're going to take out this mass. So when you got stuff dotted all the way up, there's no reason to continue DPSing it. Okay, so we got that mass, so... Once you get it dotted all the way up, just go back to the middle so you have the widest spread on everything you're doing. I like to be able to do that. Um, if you're doing this with a group, obviously, you're going to post up one person at each spawn point, and you're going to do it that way. But when you're doing it solo, you have to make yourself accessible to as much of the map as you can. So going back to the center when you have the capability to do so is not necessarily a bad thing. So, wave 8 complete. We are at 463. Um, normal monster damage, fail cancel damage, um, Arnold Demon. Oh, these are all bad again. I'm going to take the Butcher again because I like the Butcher. He's fun to kill. All right, so let's do this again. Again, we're going to stand in the middle. We're going to wait and see. So, we should get the Butcher pretty quickly. And then... All right, there he is. Here he comes. Dodge him, jump on him, and then just do the things. Right? Uh, make sure you're cycling your cooldowns. Make sure you're doing everything you need to be doing. Go over there. Make sure that thing spawns. Okay, so he hooked me in. He got the shield. Okay. So what happened there? The butcher hit me, and then the desecrator's fire hit me. So it looked like I got one shot, but in reality. They both got me. I got two shots. Which is, you know, I'm going to leave that in here because the reality is sometimes you will get RNG'd like that. Um, is that a bad thing? Eh, not necessarily. I'm not upset about that, right? I do not, under any circumstance, feel like I'm not going to be able to finish this. We are going to be just fine. Um, Might have missed out on a little bit of Aether on that wave because of that, but... Big combinations of big bads can still rip your pepperonis. All right. So we are going to get, um, like I was saying, the Hellborn can spawn on the Hellfire. So this is what we're going to get this time. This is a good one. So we're at 468 going into Wave 10. Let's see where we're at the end of Wave 10. And we will go from there. All right. We are going to try to get as many Hellborn as we can. We'll go ahead and do Soul Spires when they spawn, because why would we not? They're super easy to do. Alright, we got something down at the bottom. We got Hellborn on both other sides. Cool. Cool. Alright, we got a mass down here. So we're going to go ahead and take out the mass. We're going to run out of the CC, because CC is bad. We're going to go over here. We're going to stand inside the Soul Spire. Go ahead and try to take it out. We got about 15 seconds left. Got to make sure. So something I will say 
is if you stand in things that silence you, you will not live because you will not fire your bow. If you are not firing your bow, you are not going to live. That is something to make sure you are very aware of. You cannot just stand there if you get, like, a smoke shroud or something and expect to still be able to tank your way out of it because you are not going to be able to. You are going to get rip and pepperoni because you cannot fire your bow. Alright. So, we got a ton on that, like, 200, right? Like, that was a big wave. All right, so, going into the boss, um, I recommend focus your least favorite boss to fight first. I hate Galeb because of how much he teleports, so I always check and see if Galeb spawns. If he doesn't, I don't even care. I will just go for whoever is the closest and not even worry about it because... Galeb is the only one that I really, really, really hate. Um, so you can just stand in one spot and tank them down one at a time. Um, if they get close to each other, obviously you want to make sure that you take advantage of that. You don't want to just not DPS too if you have the capability of DPSing too. But for the most part, if you can just stick to one, take them down one at a time. Or, like I said, if they do get close together like that, you can DPS them down two at a time. They typically won't stack up with all three. Also, something to keep in mind is once you do, like, doing a dot build, right? So, once he's dotted and you know he's going to fall over, just walk away from him and start DPSing the next guy. Because at that point, you're stacking up dots that are not going to be beneficial because you're over DPSing the boss. Like, you're not doing anything that's actually beneficial. You're no longer increasing your total damage because he's already dead, right? So, make sure those things are a little dangerous. The, uh, the balls that the um, Hydra spit out don't ever stand in CC because that is the one way you will assuredly get rip and pepperoni um if you wonder why i moved over here away from wyland is because i didn't want to be close to the um hydras that were up um now we are going to switch over to the last boss that is the last one that is live we can just stand on his face and take them into the ground all right, so sometimes you may still want to not get hit by multiple things at once if you can avoid it. So like right there, walk around those, teleport to him, drop everything on him because he is staggered, stack up some damages, do what you can, right? Otherwise, I mean, you can just face tank the bosses into the dirt. Um, so don't get hit by two of those at once because those do kind of hurt, but you can teleport around, make sure you're just paying attention and not letting multiple things hit you at once. That's the big, the big takeaway from being able to face tank versus not being able to face tank, right? Like if, if there's going to be two or three particles hit you at the same time, you might want to take, you know, lays a little bit listfully to the left or not let all of them hit you because i mean at the end of the day you are still fighting a boss at the end of the day you are still taking a ton of damage you were just absurdly absurdly healing the amount of damage that you're taking so you can see here we're gonna take him out was never worried my health never dropped very low never really worried about it um, I should have left it at 666 instead of picking up the rest of them. Alright, so we're at 701. I'm just going to open the greater equipment cache, see if I get lucky with the GA. And then after I open the greater equipment cache, apparently I'm going to accidentally open the lesser equipment cache once as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just grab all of these things. See how we did. Uh, there is a... Hmm. There is... Hey, better umber cracks. Okay, so it doesn't have as good a role on innervation, but, but, this is a big but, it has more than double the duration on the Sutterfuge, or not the Sutterfuge, but the Shade Totem without 
being Mashworked, so that's pretty good. Um, we don't have anything good there, don't have anything good there, don't have anything good there. So out of all of that, the Umber Crux is decent. And then the rest we're just going to spend here because we want to get the Stygian Stones and the um, Neath Iron. But there you go, guys. That's the build. Um, if you're still here, again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, anything you do to support the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one.